Hi, thanks again for joining me on another Bible talk. Now this talk is called Jewel Osteen's Stay Positive Towards Yourself Message. Now, when you hear this title, and you see this title on YouTube, you might think, well, it's a bit ominous from a Christian point of view. Is this title a bit sort of ominous? Because you think it's almost like alluding to like humanism and sort of how good I am in myself. And, and I can understand people might think that, but I believe it's got some very important points when we see this within God's framework. Now, I believe it's a really good message when it's applicable to the Christian. So when you're in a situation where you've already, like repented, you've realised you're a sinner, you've repented and you've taken Jesus as your own personal saviour and you're going on with God. Otherwise, now, if people, if you're not quite at that level yet, the first thing in a sense, a person needs to do is still believe that God loves you. You know, and in a sense, like, you don't beat yourself up. But the first thing you do, if you don't know Jesus as your Saviour and Lord, is to get to the point where you, like, admit you're a sinner and uh, you believe Jesus died in your place. You take him as your personal Saviour and Lord, I've done a few videos on like the ABCD steps to becoming a Christian. Just if anybody wants to know a bit more about that. But the particular talk that I'm talking about now, Joel Osteen's Stay Positive Towards Yourself message, I believe it's a really good message for those people who've already accepted Jesus as Saviour and Lord. And I believe as your disciple, it means then you already are walking in that humility. You're living a life on God's strength. So it's not your self-sufficiency, but it's in a sense it's the greatness you can have in God because God is great and you just want, want to obey him. So what's this message for us then? Well, when I listen, I've listened to this message a couple of times and I've just jotted down a few things. Yeah, I'll, actually what I'll do is, I'll just read some verses, because I've, I've got some verses from the Bible that go with this as well. I don't think, I mean, Joel, was, he didn't specifically use those verses, but I know he's used other verses as well, but it's just to make the whole thing kind of hang together. And these are verses that have come to me and uh, it's John chapter 13 at the Last Supper. And Jesus says, well, John says, that Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And we know from that that he went to wash the disciples' feet. But it talks about, it kind of introduces this idea of the Jesus. He was secure in knowing the Father's love. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. So in a sense, that was like, I believe, obviously it's humility and love. But it seems like one of the foundations of Jesus humbling himself and serving was just knowing that God had given him everything. So he didn't have to sort of prove or sort of go on any ego trips or sort of assert his status. He just knew what God had given him. And the other verses from scriptures are verses I've been reading in my quiet times in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 talks about now we exhort, so verse 14, now exhort you brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient to all men. So I'm particularly focusing on comfort the feeble minded, support the weak. So people, so obviously God wants people who 
got a like feeble minded and weak to be comforted and supported. So, and I believe God, He wants you to do that for other people. And now, if you feel to do that, it means that God, He wants you, if you feel weak and maybe like feeble minded, God wants you in some way to be comforted. So, hopefully, He can use brothers and sisters in the church. But I believe part of it it's staying positive towards your self as Joel Austin was talking about. And I think the reason it's really important, obviously we want to do this with the proviso, obviously you're humble because you've taken, just here standing on it, because uh, you've taken Jesus as your saviour and Lord, you know you're a sinner, you need Jesus in a sense, you need his salvation, but in a sense you're saved because you have, or rather, you, you only have access to God because of what Jesus has done and not in your own goodness. But now you want to serve God uh, with the power of his gift to you, the Holy Spirit. So that's the sort of the proviso for this. So I think when we have these foundations in place, <clears throat> we're in a good position to look at, to say, yes, stay positive towards yourself within God's framework, as we were, as we've just been looking at in those Bible verses, and Joel Austin is talking about, well, stay positive, stay positive towards yourself, so you can bless other people. Because see, Satan, he wants, yeah, we want to be humble, and of course, we don't want to be arrogant, because that's completely against what God wants. But the other extreme is just to have this false humility, just beat yourself up, just see yourself as rubbish, I can't do anything, I'm just, I'm hopeless at everything, I'm no good. Now that's what Satan wants, he wants to just discourage you in the Christian life. So once we've got the framework of knowing Jesus, Saviour and Lord, following Jesus, receiving God's love, knowing you're made in his image, these are like the foundations. You're then in a position to say, well, God accepts you, so don't beat yourself up because God accepts you. And we know that's on the basis of what Jesus has done, that he died for you. So when you stay positive towards yourself and others, you sort of reject Satan's temptations just to uh, see yourself as rubbish. You honour God because you see yourself as made in God's image, because God loves you, God God's blessing you. So just in a sense, bless yourself. Just be in agreement with God when he says uh, he just wants to bless your life and use you and you have that potential when you're walking with God. So he can bless other people. At the same time, we do want to grow and improve. If you, Yeah, we're going to make mistakes, but just say that God still accepts us in those mistakes. But yet learn from the mistakes, grow and improve. We all need to. And uh, see, you're going to have, we all have enemies and sort of things that come against us. And Joel Austin is reminding us, don't be an enemy to yourself. And accept God's, believe God's acceptance for you as a Christian, because you're made an image of God and you're accepted because Jesus died for you. And then, of course, you, we all need to just accept, admit you're a sinner, accept Jesus, Saviour and Lord. And then you know God's acceptance of you based on what Jesus has done. So if you think you've got it wrong, well, God still accepts you. Yeah, just learn, just grow, just be secure in God and bless other people. And then just serve, just believe that God's got that great plan for your life. Listen to God that he can just lay burdens on your heart and then believe you can do these things with God's help. And then be ready to comfort somebody else because hopefully if you look at this talk, it's a Joel Austin talk, stay positive towards yourself. It's on, on YouTube. And if you can watch that talk, if you can be blessed yourself, as a Christian, believe that God's, in a sense, he accepts you. He's got you. You're then in the position to maybe you assimilate this message. You say, yeah. I believe that God's accepted me on the basis of what Jesus has done. I believe I can achieve with God's help, but all within the humility and knowing 
that God has got you, he's got his hand in your life, then you might come across somebody else. Maybe not the, now, if it, the person you're coming across, if he's not yet a Christian, you want to obviously tell that person about Jesus, that, yeah, God loves them, but it's still important for that person to admit their sin, accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, as we looked at. But if also if the person you're speaking to, if it's somebody from your church and somebody who's a Christian, they are maybe beating themselves up. Satan's having a go at them. Maybe, as in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 14, it talks about strengthening the feeble-minded and sort of supporting the weak. Maybe because you now know that God's got you, you're secure in God, you can now use that to bless somebody else, be an encourager to somebody else as well. And that's what God wants. He wants you to be blessed and encouraged, learn, and then just multiply his blessings. Let the blessings go to you. Let the blessings go through you. By the Holy Spirit, you know you're a child of God. Then encourage somebody else in God, and then that'll bless you. That'll just bless you again. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this talk. And if this talk, if it's encouraged you, obviously go and bless somebody else anyway, but maybe what you might like to do is just share this video and hopefully maybe my channel with uh, with some of your friends. Because I'm, I'm hoping a few videos I've got on, I've got them on there. It's just to build up and encourage brothers and sisters in Christ. And I've got a couple of like evangelistic ones, maybe helping people to maybe become Christians as well with the ABCD steps to becoming a Christian. Okay, so thanks for following me on this Bible talk and uh, God bless you.